As Richard Nixon gets ready to sit down with David Frost for a series of interviews in 1977, he urges the TV host, no holds barred. These men, Holden and Ehrlichman, I knew their families. I knew them since they were just kids. It's equal parts promise and threat from both the disgraced figure on screen and the actor playing him. Frank Langella is positively formidable as the former president. Always maintained what they were doing, what we were all doing, was not criminal. Langella isn't doing a dead-on impression, which is probably preferable. Nixon's ticks and quirks have been imitated so frequently and so poorly, such an approach might run the risk of lapsing into caricature. I understand correctly. Are you really saying that in certain situations, the president can decide whether it's in the best interests of the nation and then do something illegal. I'm saying that when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. He loses himself in the role with rumbles and growls, with a hunched over carriage and just the slightest lift of the eyebrows. He and Michael Sheen, who's also excellent as the breezy British TV personality Frost, reprise the roles they originated in Peter Morgan's Tony Award winning stage production. But you never feel like you're watching a play on film. The way Morgan has opened up the proceedings in his screenplay feels organic under the direction of Ron Howard, who's crafted his finest film yet and one of the year's best. I, th I thought today was a huge improvement. Are you nuts? Supporting performances are uniformly solid from Oliver Platt, Sam Rockwell, and Matthew McFadden as the more serious journalists and experts in Frost's Corner, as well as Kevin Bacon as Nixon's fiercely loyal chief strategist. It's Platt's character who puts it best when he calls Frost, quote, the most unlikely white knight, but a man who had one big advantage over all of us. He understood television. Yes, but equally going after him in some knee-jerk way, you know, assuming he's a, he's a terrible guy, wouldn't that only create more sympathy for him than anything else? And television exposed the true natures of both Frost and Nixon, for better and for worse. Till next time, from Los Angeles, I'm Christy Lemire, AP Movie Critic.